Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my one-year review of Tidal, a music streaming service with hi-fi quality. Now, if you're not familiar with Tidal, it's essentially like Spotify in terms of offering very convenient access to an enormous catalog of online music. But the big difference is that it does it with much better sound quality, which in some cases will actually exceed CD quality. If, like me, you're a hi-fi enthusiast, there's a few tricks involved in getting the best quality out of Tidal. So in this video, I'll show you everything that I've learned after using it for just over one year. And this includes streaming full quality MQA masters in 24-bit 192kHz to a UPnP network player. Yep, all of that coming right up. Tidal offers two main subscription tiers. Premium costs around $10 a month and streams music at 320 kilobits a second using AAC compression, which is roughly comparable to Spotify's premium service in price and quality. Meanwhile, the Hi-Fi tier costs around $20 a month, but lets you stream all of the tracks in CD quality. That's 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz using lossless FLAC compression, at bit rates typically between 700 and 1000 kilobits per second. This gives you a big upgrade in quality over Spotify, but a selection of albums are also available to Hi-Fi subscribers in even higher quality. These so-called Tidal Masters are delivered using the MQA format developed by Bob Stewart from Meridian Audio. Now, thanks to cunning compression, MQA can deliver 24-bit audio at sample rates between 44.1 and 192 kilohertz, using only roughly double the data of CD quality FLAC. And that allows you to stream them using mobile-friendly bandwidth that's well below typical high-definition audio rates. No, unlike Spotify, there's no ad-based free subscription to Tidal, but this in turn means artists are normally paid more per stream than they are on Spotify, although of course, there'll typically be more streams coming via Spotify. Getting started with Tidal is as straightforward as Spotify. First, sign yourself up for an account, and there's normally free or discounted trials available to try it out. The next step is to download the app onto your phone, tablet, or computer, and if you're using a network streamer, there's often a Tidal app available to download for it. You're looking at the desktop app running on my Apple MacBook, and you'll see the navigation is similar to other music services, although I did enjoy the biographies that often accompany some artists or albums. You'll also notice albums or tracks that are available in the best quality masters format are labelled with an M, and you simply choose master from the quality settings to stream them. In this instance, the Tidal app does all of the decoding, including MQA for master tracks. If you're listening through your laptop speakers or headphones that are connected directly to your phone, you're unlikely to notice a huge difference between Tidal Hi-Fi and Spotify Premium. A bit perhaps, but it's not going to be a massive difference. And that's because music on your computer and phone is normally mixed with various system sounds before then being converted from digital into analog using components that really were never frankly designed for high quality audio playback. So the first step in enjoying better quality from Tidal, whether you're using a phone or computer, is to convert the digital streams into analog sound using a separate digital to analog converter, or DAC for short. These are available in all shapes, sizes and price points, but even the most basic can dramatically improve your sound. One of the best USB DACs at the more affordable end of the scale, at least in terms of hi-fi prices, is the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red, which costs around £135 or dollars. It looks like a USB storage stick, but features a 3.5mm jack for headphones or to connect to a hi-fi. Fancy something better still? From the same series, the Dragonfly Cobalt costs around £220 or dollars, with upgraded components for a more refined playback. If you have a decent pair of headphones or even earphones connected to the Dragonfly, you'll really begin to hear the potential of Tidal Hi-Fi and Master Tracks, and they're also a great portable solution when connected to your laptop or phone. At this point, audiophiles may well be wondering exactly what resolution is being delivered by Tidal Masters. The hi-fi level is easiest to understand as Tidal simply delivers the 16-bit, 44.1 kHz files of standard CDs that are losslessly compressed using FLAC. When you're using an external DAC, the app normally decodes the file into a PCM stream that's sent to it over USB. Tidal Masters can deliver higher resolution audio than CDs, but at a variety of levels. All typically increase the dynamic range to the 24 bits that's generally used in studio recordings, but the sampling rate can vary between 44.1 and 192 kilohertz depending on the track and recording, and your ability to hear them will also vary depending on the software and hardware in your system. Frustratingly, the Tidal apps just label all the master tracks with an M, 
so you're never sure what resolution you're actually listening to. External DACs often give a bit of a clue, sometimes using different lights to indicate if they're receiving say 48, 96 or 192 kHz sample rates, and whether they're natively unpacking MQA or just decoding PCM. But the app software has a key role in deciding what stream is accessed, whether it helps decode or unpack some of it, and what kind of data is eventually sent to the DAC. As such, it really helps to know what the software is doing behind the scenes and the simple letter M isn't really enough for many enthusiasts. The answer is to switch from the standard Tidal app to something more sophisticated and my recommendation is to use Ordivana, available for Maxim Windows for around £85 with complimentary remote control apps for iOS and Android devices. I first came across Audivana about 10 years ago when I first started my journey into high definition audio. Back then it was one of the only ways that you can actually play back high definition audio files from your computer to an external USB digital to analog converter. I was using a benchmark DAC1 Pre which 10 years ago was pretty much state of the art. It would decode 24 bit 96 kilohertz files that I would buy and download from the HD Tracks website. And when I listened to them with my Sennheiser HD650 headphones, it sounded absolutely brilliant. Now today it's looking a bit old fashioned, it doesn't support 192 kHz, it won't natively decode MQA files, but it still sounds brilliant with almost everything that I feed to it and I use it almost every single day. Audivana has moved with the times and the latest versions can now also stream direct from Tidal and other high res services while also supporting UPnP devices on your network. The core benefits remain though, managing a direct route through your computer, avoiding digital mixes and system sounds, and always telling you exactly what it's working with. Here you can see Audivana's report on my benchmark DAX capabilities, confirming up to 96kHz but a lack of native MQA support. But like using the Tidal app, this doesn't mean older or less capable DAX miss out on decent sound quality, as the software will perform the initial decode of master files and simply send out the best quality your DAC can handle as standard PCM streams over USB. It may not attain the absolute maximum potential of the very best MQA files, but it still sounds a lot better than CDs. As I'm playing REM here, you can see the specs for the original stream in the bottom left quoted as 24-bit 192kHz MQA. Now that's the maximum potential quality available from Tidal, while in the lower right is what's being sent to my benchmark DAC over USB, which is 24-bit 96kHz PCM. I actually have another USB digital to analog converter in my home. It's built into my Oppo 205, an absolutely fantastic, albeit sadly discontinued machine that's connected to my hi-fi. Now the Oppo 205 is primarily a Blu-ray player and it will handle 4K Blu-ray discs, but as I just mentioned, it's also got a very capable USB digital to analog converter. With the latest firmware update, it's also a UPnP network player, it's a surround processor, and it's even a pretty decent preamplifier. I have mine connected directly to my power amplifiers and it works an absolute treat. If you'd like to find out more about the Oppo 205, I wrote a review about it, particularly concentrating on the audio side of things over at cameralabs.com. Now one of the best things Audivana can do over the Tidal apps is its ability to play to network devices that support UPnP and that includes my Oppo 205. So here's the capabilities it's reporting when connected using UPnP over my network which now interestingly reports native compatibility with DSD files but still not MQA. The major benefit to using UPnP though is no longer needing a direct USB cable connection between your computer and DAC as they're linked using your home network instead. I love being able to browse and choose music from my laptop, then hear it emerge from my main hi-fi system in HD quality without any direct cabling between them. Here's Audivana playing Michael Kiwanuka's self-titled album, followed by Dua Lipa's Future Nostalgia. Now these are both available as Tidal Masters, although notice how Kiwanuka is in 24-bit 96kHz, while Future Nostalgia is in 24-bit 44.1kHz. Interestingly, you may also notice that Audivana oversamples 44.1 and 48kHz streams to 88.2 and 96kHz when sending them to my Oppo, as indicated in the lower right. Frustratingly though, I just couldn't persuade Audivana to send 192kHz Tidal master files in their original format to my Oppo player, whether it was connected over USB or as a UPnP player. In each case, it would always down-convert it to 96kHz, convert it to PCM, and then send it that signal instead. 
You can see this chic remaster is available in 192kHz in the lower left corner, but that Ordovana and my Oppo are only talking to each other at 96kHz. Still sounds great though. At this point, I wondered exactly what my Oppo was receiving, whether it was native MQA or PCM converted by Ordovana. To find out, I filmed the video output of the Oppo on my projector screen, where you can see it identifying the Chic album as a PCM stream at 24-bit 96kHz with a reasonably hefty bitrate. Now this proves that Ordovana is decoding the MQA itself and sending high-resolution PCM data. Now before going any further I should say that 24-bit 96kHz file still sounded absolutely fantastic but I really wanted to get to the bottom as to why Ordovana wasn't sending the full 192kHz files when they were available. I wanted to find out why that was happening, could I resolve it or perhaps find an alternative. Here's another example, this time of John Coltrane's Blue Train album. First streamed here via Tidal where the specs in the low left report the original MQA file available in 24-bit 192kHz, but again that it was being sent in 96kHz PCM to the Oppo. And here's the Oppo's screen confirming it. Now interestingly, I'd previously bought Blue Train as a 192kHz FLAC file from HD Tracks about 10 years ago, which Ordovana can play from my library. And again, you can see it reporting 24-bit 192 in the lower left, but now it's being sent in the full original quality to my Oppo, and to prove it, Here's the Oppo's information screen confirming the spec, not to mention the large 9216 kilobit per second rate of the original FLAC file. This, by the way, is one reason Tidal chose MQA in order to keep bandwidth more manageable and mobile data friendly. So while my system can handle 192 kilohertz audio, I was unable to stream it from Tidal via Ordovana, whether using USB or UPnP. But Ordovana isn't the only UPnP streamer in town that can natively handle MQA files. After some searching, I came across mConnect, a mobile app that claims to stream MQA directly to compatible UPnP players where they would do the decoding. After selecting my Oppo player and logging into Tidal, I can search the catalogue here again, starting with Chic, and in the background you can see my projector screen showing what the Oppo is receiving. MConnect identifies the Chic album as an MQA original at 192kHz, and if I now focus on my Oppo screen, you can see the track also identified as an MQA studio file, and expanding the full information screen reveals the 192kHz rate. Success! Although weirdly, it still streamed John Coltrane at a lower rate, this time at 44.1kHz. And here's what it did with the Dua Lipa album, identifying it as an MQA original at 48kHz, strangely higher than the 44.1 reported by Ordovana earlier. And again, when I focus to the Oppo screen, you can see it recognised as an MQA file, which the further information panel identifies as 24-bit, 48kHz. And here's Michael Kiwanuka again, this time again reported as an MQA original at 96kHz by MConnect, and received as an MQA file in the same format by the Oppo. So unlike Ordovana in my own configuration, mConnect is actually sending the raw, folded MQA data direct to the Oppo 205 over UPnP and letting it do the work of decoding it, thereby unlocking the maximum possible quality. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve. 24-bit high-definition audio up to 192kHz streamed directly from the internet to my hi-fi player using my phone as a browser and remote control. Amazingly, the mConnect app is actually free of charge, at least in the light version that I've used here, so it's well worth trying out, although it did crash or skip sometimes in my tests, and I couldn't personally get it to implement gapless playback, something that Ordovana manages much better. So there's now lots of ways to enjoy high-definition audio from buying individual albums from sites like HD Tracks to streaming via services like Tidal, and I've not even mentioned HD streaming alternatives including Amazon and Cobuzz. I'll try them out for a future test. But for now, I've achieved what I set out to do. Enjoy the convenience of Spotify, but with the quality of high-definition audio. The big surprise for me was finding a way to do this with my existing Oppo player, which doesn't even have any built-in streaming apps. The key was using UPnP instead and finding software which could push Tidal's MQA master files direct to my Oppo with the minimum of interference and the maximum potential quality. The mConnect app has transformed my system, and for that, I owe the developers my eternal thanks. Technicalities aside, listening with Tidal over the past year has really revitalised my interest in music, which with Spotify, even at the premium level, had become little more than background noise. 
I was really enjoying listening to albums again, particularly those which had decent recordings. If you're an audiophile who's fallen for the convenience of Spotify but doesn't want to compromise on sound quality, I can highly recommend a Tidal Hi-Fi subscription. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, you are going to need to couple it with a USB digital to analog converter or some sort of UPnP media streamer, but it doesn't have to necessarily natively unfold MQA files or support 192 kilohertz. Even a basic model that goes up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz will provide tremendous sound quality that will be a massive upgrade over traditional streaming services. I certainly know I'd find it very hard to return to sub CD quality now. I hope you found that brief diversion into audio useful, and for the handful of folk who bagged an Oppo 205 before they were sadly discontinued, I hope I've whetted your appetite for using it as a high resolution UPnP audio player with mConnect. I remain constantly surprised how much this player can do for the money, especially in hi-fi terms, and if you can find one, I can highly recommend it too. Let me know if you'd like to see more AV content from me, but for now it's back to photography for this channel. See you next time, thanks for watching, bye bye.